So this video is on carbocation rearrangements which rear their ugly heads when we start dealing with SN1 reactions and you actually start forming carbocations. Where I have this molecule which doesn't really have a leaving group at the moment but has something that might be converted into a leaving group and here we have something that's not particularly nucleophilic as is but might become nucleophilic. One thing that I'll point out is that HCl very frequently comes dissolved in water and so we might imagine that the implicit solvent for this reaction is water. So the question resolves to what happens when you take this material plus HCl in the presence of water, what product or products do you make? And again, when you're thinking about flowcharts, what you might want to do is ask the question, do we have a nucleophile present? And the answer is, yeah, a fairly crappy nucleophile that's water. And Cl in Cl minus form is fairly nucleophilic, but in HCl form is not yet nucleophilic. On the other hand, this is a really strong acid. So you might imagine that one of the very first things that happens is that the water that happens to be floating around in solution will go ahead and deprotonate, creating a Cl minus. Now I actually do have a good nucleophile present. So this is something that might happening as soon as you add HCl to water. But we don't need to invoke that quite yet. So anyway, do we have a nucleophile? Well, we can generate Cl minus, so the answer is yes. Do we have a leaving group? The answer is no, not yet, but this can be converted into a good leaving group almost immediately. So whether you invoke this arrow coming from this oxygen to deprotonate the HCl, or you first generate H3O plus and then have this attack H3O plus is immaterial. It's equivalent. There's no real difference there. Both are perfectly acceptable and amount to the same thing. If you can have access to the excess protons that are available from HCl, eventually one of them will end up being attacked by this oxygen. So in an equilibrium step, what we have now done is generated the protonated version of this particular element alcohol, which is now a better leaving group. Is it an excellent leaving group? No. Is it even a good leaving group? Eh, not really, but it is good enough. And so this might very well hang out or it could be deprotonated and go back the way we came. However, since we are in a polar product solvent, one that can eminently stabilize charge well, what might happen is this might just leave on its own. This is the start of an SN1 type reaction. And again, this is going to be an equilibrium step wherein we're going to generate a carbocation, a second secondary carbocation in this case, which is why I'm even contemplating an SN1 type reaction. And we're also going to generate water. And of course, we have plenty of water floating around. So that water is going to be presumably trying to solvate there. The delta minus wants to be physically near to the delta plus in order to lower the energy of the cation. So it's eminently possible that this will recombine. After all, we have a lone pair right here, and it might very well just simply attack and go back the way we came. On the other hand, something else might happen. And if we have plenty of Cl minus floating around in solution because we used a high concentration of HCl in the first place, then the Cl minus is a better nucleophile than the water. So the water might win because we have a lot of it. It's the solvent. The chloride might win because it's a better nucleophile. And if we make a relatively concentrated solution of Cl minus, then it might attack. And so the product of this reaction would be both enantiomers of the chloride. Chloride attacking from the top would give rise to this particular enantiomer. But of course, this is a flat trigger planar carbocation, so I might very well generate at the same time the other enantiomer. And so you might say, hey, this is it. This is what I'll make. I will turn this into a better leaving group. It will leave on its own. I make the carbocation. Cl minus attacks from the top or the bottom, and thereby I generate those two enantiomers, a 50-50 mix, a racemic mix of enantiomers. So I might call that 50-50 of the enantiomers, or I might call this racemic mix of enantiomers. The point is, you make both, because you can attack from either the top or the bottom and there's no preference. However, this SN1 reaction is not the only thing that can happen. So I want to draw your attention again back to this secondary carbocation that we have generated. I want to talk about this, the reason why this is stabilized in some sense and it has at least something to do with the nearby hydrogen. So over here what I've drawn is this molecule now rotated on its side. So the methyls are there and the H is aligned with the empty P orbital that serves as the carbocation. So here's the empty P orbital. This H is aligned, the sigma bond, carbon H sigma bond, is aligned in such a way that you can donate electron density into that sec uh, that empty p orbital. This has the rough appearance of sort of a pi bond scenario. This is hyperconjugation. We've described it before. But notice what hyperconjugation means. The pair of electrons that's in this carbon hydrogen bond is already donating into this empty orbital. This kind of has the appearance of a pi bond, but it also kind of looks like, say, an arrow pushing electrons 
electron density from this carbon hydrogen bond to that carbocation. So what happens if there's so much overlap that this entire group just slides over? Well, then the outcome that you get here is a favorable hydride shift. I have now redrawn this carbocation one more time, but what I've done is explicitly draw out that hydrogen and show you that that's still a carbocation, and I've color-coded this CH bond and the H, and notice that this pair of electrons is just sliding over, and the H is kind of along for the ride. What we call this is a hydride shift, and the reason why this process happens is because we go from having a secondary carbocation to now having a tertiary carbocation. This blue hydrogen just slides over, and what you're left behind with is now a more stable carbocation than what we had before. Now I will point out that we have two different things floating around nearby in solution. We have, of course, the water, which is the solvent, and though it is a relatively poor nucleophile, it could go ahead and add in. So you might imagine a process like this taking place. But we also have the chloride floating around, and it is a better nucleophile than the water, but there's probably less of it. This has got a minus charge on it, and it will actually be attracted. On the other hand, the water is serving as the solvent, which stabilizes this, this intermediate, so the water can donate its electrons in there too. We have a competition, so some of the products that we'll make are the chloride attacking the secondary cation as before, but we're also going to generate products as well that result from first the hydride shift happening, and then the chloride attacking to generate the tertiary chloride, or the hydride shift happening and water attacking to generate, after deprotonation, the tertiary alcohol. So the moral of the story here is that if you take this material and form an actual carbocation, a secondary carbocation, you get all the products you'd expect from adding in the chloride. You would also destroy the stereochemistry but get some water present. That's going to be another product that I have neglected to mention so far. So you get both enantiomers of the chloride, you get both enantiomers of the alcohol, and you get the tertiary alcohol, and you get the tertiary chloride. So what happens when you allow this to react in this fashion, you destroy the stereochemistry and you lead to a plethora of products, and largely that's because as soon as you generate a secondary carbocation, the things that are around it trying to stabilize it might very well slide over and generate a more stable carbocation. So carbocation rearrangements essentially amounts to as soon as you generate the carbocation, you can have things slide around to make things more stable overall, and that leads to a potential mess.